On today's episode of Watch Jericho, another big update on the house, and we're gonna put heated floors in this closet. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jericho, and today, like I said, another big update on the house, and the reason it's a big update is because a lot of stuff is done. And when I say a lot of stuff is done, Take a look at this. What a massive upgrade. This, I gotta tell you guys right now, this is not sponsored. This floor, I am absolutely in love with. It's not sponsored to the point to the tune of, uh, I think I've spent almost 5,000 on it now. But this is AquaGuard water resistant engineered hardwood. Hoovy did engineered hardwood in his house, so I had to have it too. And let's see, I'll tell you guys what it's called here. White Oak North Port. This stuff has no repeats, which is awesome. Every single board in here is different. So it's nice that even if you come like look across the whole house, you can never see any of these that look the same as the rest, which is cool. Um, the grains just every once in a while might get a little close, but I've never seen one that was the same. They're also incredibly long, 72 inches each or something like that. 74 inches, <laughs> crazy. 24 hours of water resistance and you can put the wet Roomba on them and it's actual hardwood. That's the important part here. It's not LVP, this is wood. And this stuff has gone together so well. It's got underlayment attached to it and so far we haven't broken a single piece and we've done almost the entire place. So Eric's over here working on the bathroom. I just finished prepping the master closet because the master closet. Oh, nice one. Finally, finally broke. Had to, had to do it by hand. I mean the, the tongue and groove, the click lock section, none of that's broken. That's the important part of this. So very, very happy about that. And it's super easy to work with too. It's also super thick. That's what I wanted. I wanted a product that installs well because I hate glue down and nail down. That's just a complete nightmare. And I also wanted it to be waterproof and I wanted it to be real wood. We, we got them all. We got the best of everything. It better be, it's like $5 a square foot. So carpet's on the way too. The closet though, that's where all the magic is happening today. So you can see today I painted the master closet so it finally doesn't look all patchy. Very happy about that. And our floating floor heating pads are here. So this is from uh, warmerfloors.com. A lot of people have been complaining about me putting heated floors in the closet, but first of all, it's a really, really cool thing to say that your closet has heated floors and I only spent 500 bucks to do it. So I don't really care what anyone has to say about it, or even if I ever use it, I just wanna be able to say the house has heated floors in the closet, and when I sell it, I feel like it's a huge selling point too. But these are the heating mats. 524 bucks for all of this, including the thermostat, I think. I have them laid out so they would stop curling up. That was my hope, at least. Now we're gonna get them all out of here real quick and put down underlayment. You don't actually need underlayment for my floors and you don't need underlayment for this. The only reason that we have to do it is because you have to hide the wires in a channel and they say to just put down underlayment and cut a slot out of the channel and it's the easiest way to get rid of the wires. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So right now, I'm gonna get all of this out of here and go get the two rolls of underlayment that I bought and we will start rolling it out and sticking it down. And the floors have already been prepped and vacuumed multiple times so we should be absolutely ready to install in this room. If you are doing LVP at home, your floors need to be pretty level. Make sure you do a good job prepping the floors and then the floor will go down, no problems. You can see that I'm done rolling out the underlayment and there is board covering it all over the place. It does tape together at the seams. You peel back a little tape strip and that sticks to a, a little seam piece that they keep on each end. It's still absolutely terrible and trying to roll itself back up all the time, so we got weight on the ends of it. But this is the first of the heating mats right here. And it turns out you actually have to notch everything. You need to give yourself a lot of channel because these are thick, a little thicker than the underlayment even. So the underlayment on the floor and this, we're gonna have to absorb those together. 
But you can see the wires are right here and they connect to the junction box that's right down there, which has smurf tubing over to where the thermostat sits right there. So these are 10 foot mats and in the rest of the walking area, we're gonna have five foot mats. So let's come in here. I'm gonna put another 10 foot mat right here-ish. So basically all you have to do is roll these out and then tape the edges down. They did send a special double-sided heat proof tape that's supposed to hold this down. So hopefully the heated mats hold the underlayment down. That's my hope. So I'm gonna get in here right now and start taping this one down. And then I bought two five footers and the five footers are gonna run this way. And the 10 footers are gonna run this way. And that 10 footer over there, since the shelves are actually pretty far out, honestly, the shelves come all the way out to like here. So I wanted the walkway all the way in to be heated and then the area in front of the shelves. So it's pretty tricky to get this all laid out. I actually drew the room in Illustrator and just laid out a bunch of big blocks hoping we can figure out a system that worked. And I really think this is gonna work out. The only thing that's gonna be fun is cutting channels through all this underlayment to get all the wires in here. And also notches out for the ends because those ends are thick. All right, we've got the first mat taped down. So it should hold itself even though I still have some weight on the end. And while I'm here at the first mat, I'm gonna install the floor temperature sensor right here. This little guy runs all the way back to the thermostat. And of course, that is how the thermostat knows what the temp and the floor is. You don't need to know the air temp, it just needs to know how warm the floor is for this to work. I guess it might do math or something like that, not really sure, but they all install with that floor temp sensor. So. That's what we're doing. All right, I've got everything laid out, cut to length. You can see there are heating mats all the way around the walkway. And where I'm standing right now is the island that goes in the middle. So these are the one and a half by five footers right there with about that much trimmed off. I don't know, 12 inches, something like that. And the tins run the long way. And of course, we've got one more right there and I'm taping them down right now. You just attach them to the floor with double-sided tape saving all that drop because honestly, you could just hook it up to 120 volts and it works. Uh, this is some pretty simple stuff. It doesn't even pull that much power. So I'm gonna tape this one down right now and tape down that back one. And then all we have to do is cut a channel for the wires and we are ready to put flooring over this. I think we should switch the floor direction in here. Do the hop, cause what, everything in there we went this way. So this time, why don't we go with this? Is your carpet pattern going to run? The carpet pattern does run the long way, I think. Then let's do the long way. Cool. That way we can start like here. Yeah. And work that way, and it doesn't matter where our cut is, because if we start from the back, which right. is how we want to start the other way, right. we want to put a cut piece on this side. Yeah. The only thing that's gonna, that I was thinking was going to be fun is the transition out to the carpet. I don't want to do that. It won't be that bad. But it'll have four pieces in it or something. Sure. Yeah. But it'll all, he'll put like a transition in it. Yeah. And it'll work just fine. Yes, sir. Well, all right. Well, well. It turns out taping this down is not as easy as I was saying. Yeah. I'm, I've taped down a lot of it so far. It's still not exactly easy. This is holding the underlayment down, and the underlayment was a real problem. The underlayment was not fun at all. All right, look at that. Now we're in business. Now I do think we still need to get a grinder and just notch right there at the edge. Cause it, I mean, you can notch the underlayment, but they say it's not enough and I kind of agree with them now. Did you put your board on that and see what it feels like? No, but I bet it rocks. And it locks together a little Probably. Yeah. But all we have to do is just cut a slot out of the backing and then just take a grinder and, you know, whittle away real quick. I'll take the razor blade and try to notch it, but I think it needs more. And then of course we need to cut a slot here for these four wires and a slot over there and we're about done. So, just about done. After a million hours of wire routing and actual routing, just an insane amount of work. We had to route a channel in for the wires, and we had to route another channel there for the wires, and you can see where they all come up right there, 
had to chisel back to the wall, and now we can make up that junction there in that box. So, there's all the mats. There's, see, the wires that aren't in channels had to be double-sided taped down, and that is where we're at, ready to rock and roll with a couple new pieces. <sighs> My back's broken. Spinal. Spinal. Man. Well, at least it'll probably look cool when it's done. All right, we've got the thermostat just kind of hanging out of the wall in test mode here. It's kind of an interesting thermostat. It's really just a relay. It's Bunch hot. Of, it's hot? It's hot, yeah, I can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I am excited about this. Guys, check it out. It's heating right now. Uh, just hooked it up and started the first test. The temp sensor on the floor is right there, and it literally is just a relay that turns on and off with uh, a little bit of power in and a little bit of power to the floor. So, ooh, why is it? What did I do? Why is it rebooting? That doesn't seem right. And the other time it booted, it didn't do this at all. So maybe this is a new thing. Well, the thermostat came right back and turned right back on. I think it was doing its updates. Um, it wanted the zip code and the internet. It needed a lot of stuff. There's an app to control this if you want, but let's see if we can turn it off. If it's set to 72. Still heating. There it goes, just turned off. And the number is turned white, so it's off. This is not an easy job. Uh, I mean, it, it's an easy job, but it's unbelievably time consuming. And you have to pretty much get all the mats down figure out everything about the mats, and then route in a channel for all the wires. It's just massively time consuming, and uh, it's kind of a small reward for what it is. It makes that floor much, much, much harder to lay because we had to pull sections back up and route them and reroute wires over and over and over till they were perfectly flat. But it's finally done, and it looks like it's working correctly. I'm gonna turn it back up. Actually, I'm gonna tear the thermostat back apart and it's heating again. Uh, get it mounted in the wall. Now the thermostat's mounted, chop the two screws in, had to do a little wire management to make all that fit because it's pretty deep. That thing is thick like that. There's a whole back with a relay in it, so you have to really shovel that back in there, but it seems like everything's working. And let's turn the floor up and see what happens. All right, we can set a schedule. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's cool. This is actually a really nice functional touchscreen. I'm, I'm surprised. For the price, I think this thing's only like $100. It works better than most of the $100 home HVAC thermostats. All right, well it's back on, and you can see the floor has covered up most of this now. So here in a few minutes, we'll have our final sweep done, and the last two rows of boards, and the closet is ready for its island and its shelves. The closet progress is there. Not only that, but the, we, we made a few other updates while we were working on that. All of the floor is done, all of the hardwood floor. You can see that closet's done all the way out to here. And we drug that toilet out of the master closet and it's installed. And honestly, I think it's completely ready to fire up and test now. So I should go flip on the valve. And let's see what happens. Well, it's been another big day here. Everything is coming together faster than I ever imagined it. So nice seeing this finally on the wall. I don't know why people thought I wasn't going to do it when I had already done all that work to put in two boxes and the smurf tubing. And, like we planned well in advance for this. And once you plan for stuff like this, you have to continue with it. Kind of like the shower, which is a, a long-term project over there. Anyway, love how this looks. It's really echoey in here. It's a perfect square with a hard floor. So the closet will be very loud forever, but hopefully the uh, bedroom's carpet here absorbs a little bit of that sound energy. And of course, once the closet is full of clothes, a lot of it's just hanging shirts. That's mostly all I have is like 200 t-shirts, car t-shirts. That's, that's really it. So I, I just like to hang on my t-shirts. Anyway, once all those shirts are in there, the closet will probably be very, very quiet. So we're wrapped up in there. Like I said, all the floor is done. The toilet's in, just finished putting the seat on, getting all that stuff done. This is the Kohler, what are you? 
I gotta get one more of these, so I need to figure it out anyway. The Kohler Elliston with Revolution 360 elongated. So this is their new flush system that spins the water more. I don't know if that actually does anything, but it looks kind of cool when it flushes. Did a quick test, put some water in it. Uh, we flushed it two, three times. And then uh, since I'm going home for the night, I probably don't want to leave the water on just in case. That way, if anything happens overnight, well, if anything happens, I want to be here. You know the drill. Just finished vacuuming up all of our mess. Tons and tons of cut from the hardwood floors and really just kind of cleaning everything up. Already shut some of the lights off. It's time to put all the lights in. We're done with the ceiling now. And yeah, really just kind of start buttoning things up. Honestly, I'd be putting covers on all these right now, but there's gonna be a backsplash, I think. So I know I painted it. I, I know there's cabinets and I know there's a backsplash, but just went ahead and painted it just in case. Who knows when we'll have the backsplash done. So I figured paint. Paint solves all the problems, right? We did the same thing over here in the kitchen and that's the update. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop watchchairo.com for cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do, and I will talk to you next time. I don't know if I showed this at the end of the last video. I meant to, but the TV is clearly back on the wall and everything's hooked up and it is working great. Now we can leave Archer on 24 seven while we work. Guys, if there's one thing I'm upset about with this toilet, I bought it at Lowe's because it was on like clearance, right? It's usually $220, but it was on sale for $99, which is the price of like your normal builder grade toilet. So it said missing hardware on top of it and the box had been opened. So I opened the box and from what I could tell, the only thing missing was this Kohler bowl gasket here and the hardware for that. So I bought that at a cost of like 30 more dollars, which put me, you know, at too much money for a basic toilet, right? About uh, 130 something dollars plus tax. But I get home, start building that thing, putting it all together, and guess what? The bowl gasket was in there all along. As you guessed, what was missing was two quarter 20 nuts, and somebody returned it because two quarter 20 nuts were missing. Unbelievable. I've told you guys before Atwood sells bolts by, you know, the bag, you can weigh them, whatever you want. I've got massive bags of quarter 20 everything. So unfortunately, I wasted $30 and I had already opened the bowl gasket and got ready to assemble it when I looked inside the tank and found the bowl gasket. But hey, if that's the most upsetting part of this video, we're doing pretty good. <laughs>